Welcome back, guys. My name is Patrick. This is the Oilers Rundown. Just wanted to give you guys an updated target list. It's trade deadline weekend. Things are changing constantly. A couple of these guys could be moved as I'm recording this video, but let's go through the latest. We did hear a brand new name mentioned last night that hasn't been connected to the Oilers to this point, so I'll go through the current target list that I've compiled. We'll start with defense, have a couple forward targets for you as well. So let's get started. So these are the current targets on defense that I'm hearing in connection to the Edmonton Oilers. Carson Soucy of the Seattle Kraken. From everything we're hearing, Soucy is the Oilers' top target on defense, and he's definitely number one on my list. He shoots left, can play both the left and right side, and he's signed to an affordable cap hit of $2.75 million for this year and next. Justin Braun of the Philadelphia Flyers. The Oilers have been primarily focusing on a left-shot depth D-man, but Kurt Levins brought up an excellent point in his Nine Things article today. What if there is an injury on the right side? That's where Justin Braun could come in. He's a right shot D, so someone would need to play their offside. But if someone like Cody Ceci did go down, Braun would be a perfect fit to replace him. The surprise name on the list? Zidane Chara of the New York Islanders. Chara is definitely the most shocking name on the list. I have to say he's also the least likely in my opinion. Chris Johnston confirmed on the Got Your Back podcast with Ryan Rashog that the Oilers have at least inquired about Chara. I'd love it if the Oilers could bring him in. I just can't see him wanting to come to Edmonton. And I don't think Lou Lamarillo will send him anywhere he doesn't want to go. Brett Kulak of the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens are apparently reluctant to move Kulak. They would need to receive a good offer to make the deal. He would be a perfect fit in the third pairing left side for the Oilers. He is currently making $1.85 million and is a pending UFA. Ryan Graves of the New Jersey Devils The Oilers got a first-hand look at Graves in yesterday's victory over the Devils. Graves is the most expensive player on the list, and as a result, probably the most unlikely with the Oilers' tight cap situation. He can play both sides and has term, so he'd be a great fit, but the Oilers are probably going to opt for someone more affordable for this season. Graves is signed at $3.166 million for this year and next. Mark Stahl of the Detroit Red Wings. Stahl fits the Oilers' needs as a third-pairing left-shot D, but he also carries a no-move clause, so he'd have to agree to go to Edmonton. For this reason alone, I'd say he's probably an unlikely fit for the Oilers. He has a $2 million cap hit and is a pending UFA. And I'm hearing a couple names at the forward position for the Oilers. Nick Paul of the Ottawa Senators. Paul is the name we were hearing the most in connection to the Oilers, but there are a lot of teams in on him. He'd be the ideal bottom six addition, with the ability to play both center and left wing. He has a cap hit of $1.35 million and is a pending UFA. Mason Appleton of the Seattle Kraken Appleton would be another solid addition to the bottom six for the Oilers. He has an excellent cap hit and is an RFA at the end of the year, so he's under team control. For trade bait, if the Oilers are looking to acquire both a defenseman and a forward, Josh Archibald and his $1.5 million salary would likely have to move to make the money work. Archibald has played well, but he can't play for the Oilers in the United States, and the Oilers need a full-time player in his position. If the Oilers do have a prospect in play, I'd have to say Dmitry Samarukov is one of the most likely. The Oilers are deep on the left side with prospects, and they all can't make the team. Right now he's behind Philip Roberg, who is out for the next two to three weeks with an injury, William Legison and Marcus Niemelainen. And some breaking news, guys. Just hearing Kyle Turris has been placed on waivers for the Edmonton Oilers, so that will free up some additional cap space for the Oilers to make some moves here at the trade deadline. Well, guys, that's the latest I'm hearing. I have to say Carson Soucy still definitely at the top of my list. Nick Paul, I'd love to get from the Ottawa Senators if they can make something like that work. I'd also love Zidane Ochara. He's a really surprising name to see on that list. The Oilers, we know, have at least inquired, so I can't see it happening. I can't see Zidane Ochara coming to the Oilers, but I would certainly love to have him if they can make something work. I'll update you guys if we hear any more big names in connection to the Oilers. Those are all the names I'm hearing right now, but I'm sure between now and Monday, something else is going to come in play, but we could even possibly see a trade today for the Oilers. So I will be back if something big happens. We hear some more names, but for now, that is the latest on the trade deadline for the Oilers. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comment section below. If this is your first visit to the channel and you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. 
Thanks for being a fan. Have a great day, guys. I'm sure I'll see you soon. Take care.